Hi guys and welcome back to Easy Stats with Danny D and uh, this is part 2 of uh, Hypothesis Testing Study Unit 3. So here we will be doing two independent populations. We'll be doing two independent populations. So now uh, we're still gonna, we're still gonna uh, follow the five steps of Hypothesis Testing and uh, if you don't know what is the null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis or you don't know anything of the five steps please go and check my video on uh, part one which explains everything okay so today we'll be dealing with two independent populations so for two independent populations um, this is actually how uh, we work you'll be given two different population means you'll be given two different population means and then you'll be given two different population standard deviation two different population sizes so sometimes they can give it to you in a table like this sometimes they can give it to you in a scenario in words so you have to uh, know how to I identify those uh, keywords or those uh, important information the sample sizes the sample mean and the standard deviations but we'll get to to this in a short period of time so now as always they'll give you a scenario and then in the scenario you're gonna read and then you will know whether you were working with one-sided uh, or two-sided hypothesis. If it's one-sided, you have to know if it's left-sided or if it's right-sided. But you have to read the, for the, the whole scenario for you to understand everything. Okay, so we're just going to read this scenario over here. It says, a manufacturer of breakfast cereal uses two automatic machine brands to fill 500 grams containers with cereal. Two random sample samples provided the following information so this is the information then they say to you test whether the mean mass of the containers filled by machine one is less than is less than the mean mass of the containers filled by machine two use alpha equal five percent all right so the first things for the first thing we're going to do is we're going to state the null and alternative hypothesis as always they'll ask you that question state the null and alternative hypothesis as you already know the null hypothesis is h0 H0 and the alternative hypothesis is HA so for two independent populations the null hypothesis is always going to be U1 is equal to uh, U2 meaning that the the average uh, the average or the mean between uh, population 1 and population 2 are exactly the same and then for this one is where you're going to write your alternative so in our scenario they said we must check if the mean uh, for containers filled by machine 1 is less than the mean mass of containers filled by machine 2. So this is how you write your null and your alternative hypothesis. This is just uh, information that they gave you. I saw uh, some of my students were actually using this to write their null hypothesis. So you don't use this. The only time you're writing your null hypothesis with the number is with one population. So here is two independent populations. So you're going to say the mean mass of containers filled by machine one is equal to that. Always when it comes to the null hypothesis, you use the equal sign. And then the alternative is going to be less than for this specific question. That's how you write your null and alternative hypothesis. And then step number two, which is uh, step number two, specify the significance level and test statistics. In this case, the significance level they give us, they said 0 0.05. So alpha is equal to 0 0.05 now there are two formulas that we're going to use for this I'm going to use this to type so the formulas that we use the first formula is the formula for for z which is uh, z is equal to um, just let me just uh, increase this formula says z is equal to x bar uh, 1 I'm going to write the bars after x bar, uh, x bar 1 minus x bar 2. I'll write the x, the 1 and the, the bars after. And then is uh, over uh, the square root. I also draw the square root uh, manually. The square root of uh, s standard deviation, standard deviation 1. Then division one squared. Uh, actually, let me just write this. Let me just use this to write this for me. It's z is equal to 
is equal to x bar x bar 1 minus x bar 2 over the square root of standard deviation 1 squared over standard deviation 2 I mean over n2 over n over n1 uh, sorry over n1 plus standard deviation 2 squared over n2 now you use this when you have a large sample you all you already know from uh, part one that you use z for a large sample and for t you're going to use a small sample so for t you're going to use a formula that says x x bar 1 minus x bar 2 over uh, sp sp multiplied by the square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 so that is the formula for a small sample so this is if one or both of them is small if one or one or both if one or both samples are small if one or both sample are small then you use the t formula then you use the t formula and then if both of them are large if both samples are large if both samples are large you're going to use the z formula now that is how you specify the significance level and test statistics so in this case they said that uh, the significance level is 0 0.05 I specified here and then the test statistic that we're going to use n1 n2 is equal to 45 n1 is equal to 55 both of them are large because they are both above 30 so meaning that we're going to use this formula over here now sp this uh, the formula that says uh, there's uh, the part of the formula that says sp in the if one of both one or both uh, population I mean standard deviations are small so if both one or both are small then you want to use this and how do you calculate SP there's a formula saying calculating SP saying SP is equal to is equal to the square root of the square root of uh, n1 n1 minus 1 multiplied by s1 squared s1 squared plus n2 let me just put brackets n2 minus 1 multiplied by s2 squared s2 squared everything over n1 plus n2 minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 so now if one of this was small let's say n1 was equals to 20 for example then it means we're going to use this formula of t and for us to use this formula of t then we have to calculate sp first so this is the formula for calculating sp n1 is would, would be given uh, s1 you'd, we'd, you'd be given as well n2 and s2 and then you just substitute everything here to get sp after finding sp then you substitute in this formula to calculate the value of t but then because now both of them are large, we're going to use this formula. So now let's uh, substitute. We're going to say z is equal to, what is x bar 1? x bar 1 is 496 point, uh, let me do this. x bar 1 is 496 point, it's 496.7. And then we subtract we subtract uh, x bar 2 which is 506.3 and then we say divide by we divide by the square root of divide by the square root of uh, what is standard deviation 1 standard deviation 1 is 18.5 so you're going to say 18.5 over 18.5 over uh, n1 is 55 and then uh, let me just so it's 18.5 squared so you write 2 there 
over 55 and then uh, plus the other side as well so the other one for n2 is going to be uh 12.5 12 12.4 12 12.4 over 12.4 over 45 over 45 so that is how we do that and then let me just put the squared here on the 12.5 so 12.5 12.5 squared squared now from here you go to the calculator and you substitute everything in the calculator to find your answer so you're going to say 496.7 minus 506.3 over the square root of 18.5 squared over 55 plus 12.4 squared over 45 equal minus 3.092 minus 3.092 so that Z is equal to minus 3.092. Minus 3.092. Now, that is how you calculate your test statistic. And then they'll give you the p-value. They'll give you the p-value. Let me actually just open this and see what was the p-value given. Uh, open it close. For this question, the p-value that was given is... Uh, Oh, they didn't give the p-value. They just asked to calculate the test statistic. They didn't give the p-value. So let's assume that they gave the p-value and they said the p-value is... Uh, uh, I'm running out of writing space. Let's say they gave the p-value to be... They said the p-value... p-value... The p-value... Let's say they said is equal to... Uh, 0 0.0311 0 0.0311 now from here what you're going to do is you're going to compare the p-value against significance level so you're going to say the p-value is less than alpha because alpha is 0 0.05 so 0 0.03 is less than 0 0.05 and then if this is the case what do you do you reject the null hypothesis if you don't know uh when to reject and when not to reject the null hypothesis um go and watch the first video the video on part one reject the the null hypothesis you're going to reject the null hypothesis and then you have to make a decision and go, you, you just made a decision then you have to draw conclusions so if you rejected the null hypothesis then you're going to say because you are testing whether the mean mass of the container by machine one is less than that of continuous by machine two then you just rejected this then you have enough evidence for this because that is what the initial claim says so you always draw conclusions based on the initial claim so they gave you the alternative hypothesis which was less than and then you said uh, you rejected that though, so that means you have enough evidence for uh, that alternative hypothesis so you're gonna say there there is enough evidence to say that to say that containers filled filled by machine one are less than those filled filled by machine two so that is how you write your 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 conclusion that's how you write your conclusion you write your conclusion like that okay this one does not include you say the evidence there is enough evidence to say that the containers filled by machine one are less than those filled by machine two 
So if if the p-value was greater, let's say the p-value was in, in, in state uh, 0 0.0751. So 0 0.07 is more than 0 0.05. So that means you will say that the p-value is greater than alpha, then you do not reject the null hypothesis. Then your final statement or your conclusion will be that there is not enough evidence because you just you didn't reject the null hypothesis, meaning that this statement that they gave to you there is not valid or there is no enough evidence for that. So you're going to say there is not enough evidence to say that the containers filled by machine 1 are less than those filled by machine 2. But now because the p-value is less in this case, we're going to reject the hypothesis and say that the evidence is enough to say that machine 1 fills less containers, uh, fill containers less than machine 2. That is uh, two independent populations. So now remember your null and alternative hypothesis will depend on whether you're dealing with left-sided, right-sided, or two-sided. So go and watch the videos, uh, the video on study unit on, on part one if you don't understand what is left, right, or two-sided. And then also go through some uh, question papers and practice different type of questions where it comes when it comes to two independent populations. Otherwise, this is all for part two, and uh, I'll see you guys in part three very soon.